Welcome to Faces of Open Air. And today I'm joined by Vanessa. Welcome, Vanessa. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you for inviting me. So, Vanessa, can you tell us a little bit about your background and what your role is at the moment? So, uh, my background, I'm um, biomedical engineering. Uh, and I have a specialization of biomedical engineering. So it's for uh, medical instrumentation and computer engineering. And uh, I have a master in medical informatics. Fantastic. And how did you become involved in Open Air? Yeah, that's actually a really nice question because uh, Open Air appeared in my life uh, in the moment I was trying to solve the issue that somehow uh, opener was the right answer for it. So just, just to give some context, um, during my bachelor, uh, we had this uh, subject where we have to create uh, some instrument, medical instrument, and then collect the data from that instrument into a database and display it to, to an end user. And what uh, I decided to do with a colleague from, from my course was to do an ECG. So during Building that ECG, I remember we had to build all the electrical components, all the breadboard, all the resistances, all the amplops, electrodes, so on. And of course, that, that was a device that measured analog signal, and we had to transform that to digital. And once we transform it to digital uh, and save the data into a database, we start to ask ourselves, how do we name these things? What is relevant in the future for a medical user, medical practitioner? Uh, what we are seeing on this signal or the ECG, so we see the, the different complex, the KFT complex, what, what is relevant? And we ended up making our own thing, uh, the way we understood it, but we were always wondering why there isn't something that is standardized, uh, internationally agreed. So then, uh, of, of course, we delivered that project for that class. And during the master on my first year, uh, we had another class for um, electronic high courts where we were presented all the different um, standards that exist and where they should be used, uh, what is the best thing. Uh, and OpenEHR entered in one of the classes. And the first thing I remember seeing was the CKM and the teacher showing us the blood pressure archetype. And for me, that was just a cherry on top of the cake because I didn't need to define that on my own. It was already defined by the main people, the, the people that had the right knowledge how to define medical uh, concepts. And uh, yeah, I ended up by curiosity checking the ECG. And the ECG also existed there, so it was just perfect. And then I decided that um, for the dissertation of my thesis, I would uh, want to learn more about Open EHR. And um, I decided to, to go into an Erasmus project to Slovenia, uh, where I worked in a company that was called Marand at that time, and nowadays it's called Better. Uh, and I stayed there for five years or something. And uh, I loved uh, what I did there. It was so many projects. Uh, I learned so much about Open EHR. And uh, I ended up doing my dissertation about uh, compliance of uh, local repositories based on Open EHR and their compliance with the Open EHR CTM. Because at the end, if we are not using the same blocks of software, which are the archetypes, uh, we have different definitions and it's hard to have interoperability that way. So it, it was really, really cool to, to learn about all these different, uh, well, panoplia, <laughs> I hope that word exists in, uh, in English of uh, things that exist in Open EHR. Wonderful. And now you're the co-chair of the Clinical Program Board. So you're talking there about ensuring international standardization, but can you tell us a bit more about being part of the clinical program board and how you're driving that standardization? So it's it's complex uh, because uh, we started the group uh, about a year ago or something. And we need to know that the group that will be with us have the right knowledge to keep uh, the group going forward. Uh, it's not just, uh, having knowledge about medical part, it's 
actually having knowledge about OpenEGR and how it's been uh, implemented into different systems and know the consequences of if it's not well implemented, what can happen? And that, that's very important and sometimes not uh, tackled uh, in the way it should be. But uh, the, the aim now with this group that we, we are uh, putting together, uh, which is really a wonderful group, really knowledgeable people uh, with a lot of experience, uh, I think uh, in, in the next months we can make, which we aim, which is putting for now the CPM going with even more um, clinical concepts that are being sent uh, and needs to be analyzed and also do the process of how do you start into open HR modeling more uh, easy to understand? Because sometimes there is this uh, questions, okay, I, I understood the basics, but how do I start? And we are building a lot of documentation and updating some of the previous documentation, which was wonderfully uh, written, uh, but we need to make extra effort on having that more accessible and uh, easy to read for, for the newcomers. Yeah, and, and growing that new community of talent is something that we need to do as we grow. So thank you for all of your hard work there. I wonder what you're looking forward to in the future in terms of open air. Where do you see open air going? It's a, it's a very interesting question. Um, I, I don't think, I, I have used all the current standards and I think open Asia has its place in the future for uh, very defined clinical grain data, and it's wonderful. Um, I, I've also used FIRE, and I understand where it should be used more for exchange part. I, that, that, that's my <laughs> opinion. But there is something on OpenEHR that sometimes people are not aware, which is the full stack of OpenEHR. Not speaking on, only about the clinical models, uh, speaking about all the other uh, components, so the GDL, the task planning, all the th these things, when you put it together, it's amazing what you can achieve in such a quick time. Um, I, I can tell you, when I was in beta, I, I was building this uh, uh, project called Pathfinder, uh, which nowadays is more known as Better Portal. Uh, but when we started the, the, the Pathfinder, it was using almost the whole full stack. And it it was amazing to see just things flowing so quickly and how it, it, it how easy it was to actually develop on top of it. I have seen other projects in Portugal. Uh, mm -hmm. There are uh, a lot of projects in Portugal being uh, with, with their own platform. There is a platform there also being built open agile platform. And what they are achieving uh, on, on that, it, it's also wonderful to see. And it's not people with a lot of um, IT experience. So it's mostly PhD students that are building this platform. And that just means that actually all the reference model of OpenEHR is quite easy to understand. And that's important. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a matter of seeing what exists uh, and see where it can be used. So yeah, I, I believe open EHR is a really uh, wonderful feature. That's great to hear. Thank you so much, Vanessa. And I think we're both looking forward to that wonderful future. Yes, thank you.